Hey, how's it going everybody? It's Nick here. Today I'm going to be providing you all with a tutorial on how to install the Pelican game panel while using Cloudflare Zero Trust Tunnels. So there's a couple of reasons and a couple of different instances where you may want to do this yourself. For me personally, I host a home lab and I want to host Pelican game panel on it. And I've kind of realized that this is the best way for me to do it. I mean, it's the easiest. I've kind of dabbled around with using nginx proxy manager which is how i do most of my web services but for pelican and the wings daemon i've realized that this just works best in my case before we dive into anything regarding setup or anything of similar nature i would like to give a shout out to the video that's on screen right now pretty much the basis of this video there are a couple of key differences between pterodactyl and pelican uh, but this tutorial is specifically for pelican because they did change a couple of things with installation and setup this video is also going to serve as a complete pelican install tutorial uh, as opposed to just focusing on the cloudflare zero trust tunnel uh, with that being said with pelican being new you still may be wondering what pelican is in short pelican is basically just a fork of pterodactyl however as you can see it's being updated as its own thing i mean it's completely separate now from pterodactyl uh like the admin panel looks completely different like i can show you some screenshots here again the completely rewritten admin panel a uh, lot of updates to the wings daemon and i'm sure they're going to be making more updates to the panel and such as well as time goes on so without further ado we're going to get right into it by installing the vm for this setup we're going to have the panel and wings uh the daemon on the same virtual machine it's going to work best in our case i'm just going to call this pelican Gonna use Ubuntu 2404 because that's what they recommend on their docs. Gonna give it 64 gigs of storage for now. We're gonna give it six cores. And we'll give it 16 gigs of RAM. That all looks good. We're gonna start after created and let's install the VM. All right, try our install Ubuntu server. All right, welcome. All right, we're just gonna select our language. Uh, we're just going to do the regular default Ubuntu installation, default proxy address. Let that test just in case. And we are all good. That all looks good. Again, this is all virtualized and continue. We're not going to worry about Ubuntu Pro. We are going to install OpenSSH because we're going to use MOBA XTERM for this. I can't be bothered doing this in the Proxmox shell. We're not going to add any additional dependencies at the moment. And we're now going to wait for Ubuntu to install. And the installation is complete. We're gonna reboot the server. And there we go. We're gonna log in with the account that I created during setup. We're gonna elevate ourselves up to root. I'm doing this just for the sake of me. I just wanna log into root on MOBA X term. Uh, so we got ourselves up to root, we set the root password, and then we're gonna go ahead and edit the SSH config, SSHD config rather. And we're just gonna permit root login. If I can spell there we go all right in typical first install fashion we're gonna do apt update as well as apt upgrade now we can start following the install documentation over at pelican.dev pelican's official website first thing that you're gonna notice when you uh, open up the pelican docs is is the danger label and a couple of warning labels I'm pretty sure these are the same ones or similar ones that are on pterodactyls docs Obviously, first one being you should have some basic familiarity with Linux before you proceed. I have minimal familiarity and I'm just fine with this. So again, just as long as you get the basic gist of it, you should be good. Uh, picking an OS. So this is where it's important. We did install 2404 because the documentation was written, uh, assuming that that's the base OS. If you are still wanting to use Ubuntu 2004, you can uh, just keep in mind that there's no SQLite support, which is the recommended data storage engine for pelican which actually changed pterodactyl had it as mysql pelican moved it over to sqlite uh which is interesting and for the sake of this video we are going to be following defaults and recommendeds and stuff like that uh, but you also want to keep in mind that ubuntu 2004 eol is april 2025 so literally next year uh, if you're using an open vz machine unless specifically configured it'll not work with pelican i installed pelican under a qemu you can do, again, it does say OpenVZ unless specifically configured. The same goes for an LXC. Uh, it's mainly an issue with the Wings daemon, at least the whole LXC conflict. 
uh, with some sort of nested Docker networking. I don't remember exactly what the whole issue is, but again, you can configure it to work that way. Uh, but for the sake of everything, we're just going to be using a QEMU setup. And then this warning is just letting us know that we have to install this specific PHP repository, which is fair. You do want to do that. So we're going to do that here and we're going to click enter to continue. And then we do have the other necessary dependencies. We are going to be using PHP 8.3 uh, as well as the following extensions. We will not be installing a MariaDB server or a MySQL server. Uh, for the sake of this tutorial because we're going to be using SQLite and from my understanding the installation isn't going to be affected if you don't install um, either MySQL or MariaDB. The only time that it's going to be affected uh, is if you don't install the PHP 8.3 MySQL extension. Uh, Composer, when you install it, it still wants that. So we're going to go ahead and install PHP 8.3 as well as the necessary extensions. And just like that, we'll accept that. That's done installing. We are going to install Nginx as well. We're going to be using that during this tutorial. And then I'm pretty sure we'll just double check, but I'm pretty sure with the full install of Ubuntu server, curl and tar is already there. It is following the order of documentation. We will be installing composer next. So just follow their install commands, create our directories and download our files like so. And then we're going to tar the tar.gz and then chmod into storage and bootstrap cache so next up we can go ahead and just run the install script it warns you to not do it as a super user you can in this case and there you go so the panel itself is installed we will go ahead and configure it i'll start by just configuring the environment obviously the application url is going to be different for everybody but we're going to go ahead and set mine to pelican.oknick.club because that's the domain that i want to use and then here's what I was talking about where defaults are a little bit different as well as recommended. So the cache driver on Pterodactyl used to be Redis, or I mean, it still is Redis on Pterodactyl, but with Pelican, they changed it to file. So again, for this tutorial, we're just going to be sticking with defaults. Session driver, it says file systems recommended. It shows database as default. We're just going to set it to file. Q driver recommended. Default is recommended. We'll do that. And then UI based settings editor. Yes, this is an issue with Pelican, I believe for whatever reason the environment setup it hangs here i can't exactly remember what but i know pterodactyl does ask you a question after this um but honestly this is nothing too detrimental you can always go in the config afterwards so we're just going to control c um and if we run the command again you can see everything got saved so next up we're going to set up the database database driver sqlite again that's recommended as opposed to mysql which again pterodactyl had mysql as recommended if i remember correctly but we're just going to roll with sqlite now this is another bug with pelican uh, i will show you what happens if you leave this as default you should be able to leave this as default but we'll hit enter. We are not going to set up mail. You can do that if you'd like. But if I run the command to initialize the database, you will see that it throws an error at you, throws a couple errors at you, telling you that the database file does not exist. Now, when I did this, I was really confused at first because I didn't actually look at exactly what database file it was trying to find. If you notice, it's going to var www pelican database var www pelican database database that sqlite. So that's a really weird issue. It's easy to fix. You just go into the environment database setup sqlite and you're just going to type database.sqlite and then we'll run the script and we should be good we're going to go ahead and run the script to create a user we'll make it an administrator and then our user is created so now i gotta go ahead and create a new cron job so again we're going to be following the one for nginx so we're going to go ahead and do this still following the documentation paste this line at the very end Control x y enter and now we can go ahead and daemonize it. It's going to be under etc system D system. Uh, if I can type pelican dot service, it's going to copy over the Q file into here. Uh, it does say some systems, the user and group might be different. Uh, in this case, for me, www data works just fine. We do have to set permissions, so we're just going to copy this down and run it. So over here at web server configuration, there is an information uh, box saying that you must create SSL certificate if you want to use HTTPS, which we are going to do in this case. So for that, we're going to be using this command. And again, this was taken from the video again, that's up on screen right now. Again, huge shout out to the video and its creator. So to do this, we're going to make a new directory etc certs, and then we're going to go CD into certs, and then we're going to run the command. Theoretically now, if we go over to etc, certs there you go we got full chain and private key 
Uh, from here, you can see if you're not using PHP 8.2, which we're not, we're using 8.3 as recommended by the documentation, we will need to edit the config file. It's one line that we have to edit, I believe. Yeah, right down here, which we'll get to. We're gonna remove the default Nginx uh, sites enabled. And then we're gonna copy this web server configuration. And they want it in etc Nginx sites available. And we'll just call it pelican.conf. We'll paste this in here. And there are a few things that we will have to change. Uh, first and foremost being the server name, you're going to set this to the machine IP. Um, so for me, it's 100066. And then same when listening for 443, we'll do 100066. Next up, we have to change the location of our SSL certificate and key, which I have mine in ETC certs. And same goes for the private key. And then lastly, you want to scroll down to be a fast CGI underscore pass. Uh, we're using 8.3 PHP. Everything else looks good. We're gonna control X out of this, save it. Uh, we can now create a symlink. So we'll go ahead and link it like so, and then we'll restart Nginx. All right, now we're onto the Wings daemon service. Before we completely move on, we are gonna get started with Cloudflare. So basically just make sure that you have a domain uh, connected with Cloudflare already. And we're not gonna be doing anything in the actual domain um, itself on Cloudflare. We're gonna go over to the sidebar and click zero trust. And then we don't have to worry about anything here. Uh, we gotta access tunnels, which used to be under access, but now it's under network. So we'll go to networks tunnels, and then we can go to add a tunnel. Selecting your connector, you wanna use Cloudflare. We'll go next. And we're gonna name this tunnel, we'll name it Pelican. And then it talks about choosing an environment. We're just going to go over to Docker. What we do want to do first, actually, we're going to install Docker uh, just using their documentation, if you haven't already. And then we're going to start Docker on boot. So not only does that get the whole Docker part of the documentation out of the way, but we can also install Cloudflare. So we're going to copy the command that they give us, and we're going to paste it into MOBA. When you do that, you should see the connector pop up. Make sure that there's no errors, and we can end the tunnel session. Now that we've confirmed that it works, we can go ahead and add a uh, an additional flag here we're going to do dash d and then dash dash restart unless stopped so that's going to go ahead and enable it on boot and then it's going to keep it running in the background unless of course we stop the container we we'll go ahead and run that and everything should be good we're not done yet we're going to go ahead and click next and then under public host names we're going to do pelican dot and we'll do okay nick dot club and then this is going to be https and then this is going to be the local IP of the machine. You're going to go to additional application settings, TLS, and we're going to enable no TLS verify. That's very important when doing this. And we'll save tunnel. So if we go over to pelican.oknick.club, you can see that we can log in. We'll go here to log in and we are met with the dashboard. Now the next step is of course installing the wings daemon. Uh, so this, again, this is going to be on the same exact VM that we're using. Um, so we don't have to worry about the system requirements. We've already confirmed that we're using 2404. And again, 2004 you can use, but again, end of life is next year. So we already installed Docker. Uh, we're gonna enable swap. Um, most machines are gonna wanna do this. So we're gonna go nano slash etc default and then grub. And then under grub command line Linux default, we're just gonna do swap account equals one. We'll save that. And then we're gonna have to run update grub. And then after that, we're just gonna reboot the machine. And then once that's rebooted, which it should have been enough time, yep we can log back in. So next up is installing wings. We're literally gonna copy this entire block of commands and run it. Perfect. So now we're gonna make our way over to Pelican, uh, the admin panel, which again, is completely different um, from Pterodactyl. And as you can see, it's very new, 1.0.0 beta three. Uh, so on this screen, we're met with no nodes detected. We're gonna fix that. We're gonna create first node. For domain name, this can be anything. Uh, this is gonna be, for my case, node.oknick.club. Uh, some people may do node one, node US, US one, something like that. The port we're going to leave is 8080 for now. We are going to get back to this and we will have to change this in a little bit. Uh, it says you can use 8443 um, if you're using Cloudflare, but we're using Cloudflare in a little bit of a different way, so we're not going to worry about that. Since the panel is using SSL, we do have to communicate over SSL, which we will do just fine. Uh, advanced settings, you can change this if you'd like. The one thing I will say, though, with the upload limit, I would definitely consider um, being lenient with this because with the Cloudflare tunnel, uh, us using the free plan, uh, we won't be able to do any sort of SFTP kind of thing. And yeah, Pelican actually expresses this in their documentation. You can't use the SFTP port through Cloudflare unless you have the enterprise plan, which I don't. So we're just going to continue and create the node. 
So now, as you can see, we see a couple more things here. We are going to go over to configuration file and copy, and then we're going to put this into nano etc pelican config.yml. We're going to paste this right in here, and then we do have to change the cert and key location. Again, this is going to be the same etc certs, and then same with the private key etc certs. We can go ahead, control X and save. Uh, so now we can actually start wings using their debug command that they give us. We'll go ahead and do that. If we head back over to our nodes page, you can see that the node is still not recognized. So what we have to do, we have to go back into our tunnel, create a new public host name. Uh, this one we're going to call node or again, whatever you called your node. Same thing, type HTTPS. We're going to do 10.0.0.66 or your local machine IP. And then we'll do 8080 or whatever port you use for your wings daemon. Same thing, you wanna to go to additional application settings, TLS, no TLS verify, and save hostname. And again, you will notice that it still shows us offline, so you wanna to go to edit, and then we're gonna change the port to 443. The reason we wanna change it to 443 is because we want the secure connection to node.oknick.club, which already goes to 8080. Um, so again, just a little bit of tunneling, so we can save changes, we can go over to our nodes, and you can see that it's healthy. And then good news, we're not met with any kind of errors within the wings daemon logs, but we'll go ahead and end that process. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, daemonize wings. So we'll copy this, go over to nano etc, systemd system, and we'll just call this wings.service. Go ahead, paste this. Our working directory, we didn't change um, from etc pelican, so it can stay like that. Control X, save it. And then we're just gonna run the system CTL enable. And we're good. All right, now everything should be good. Uh, so things do work a little bit differently, as I mentioned with Pelican. So you wanna go into the node. Uh, as you can see, it is um, spitting out the information. So that's a good sign. Uh, you're gonna wanna create the allocation here. Um, there's no such thing as locations anymore. So you're gonna make the IP address the 10.0.0.66 or whatever the local IP is of the wings daemon. Uh, alias, let's call it wings daemon. We're just gonna set the port to 25565 and we'll submit. From there, we can go ahead over to servers. We'll create a server. Uh, display name, we're just gonna call this test. I'm the owner, uh, select your node. Primary allocation, if you just made the one, you should just have one here. Don't worry about an additional one. For the egg, uh, we're just gonna use vanilla Minecraft and we're gonna give it the latest server version. That all looks good. You can change these if you would like. It's not necessary in this case, and we will go and create. Since it's installing, we'll go ahead and check the console, and it is, and as you can see, it is done. Um, so Pelican, the actual panel itself looks identical to Pterodactyl. I'm not sure if they plan on uh, changing it, um, I'm sure their priorities are elsewhere, rightfully so. But we can now boot up the latest version of Minecraft and make sure that our server works. So we can go over, start a new direct connection, and we can log in using the local IP address. Or if you port forward, uh, you'll be able to log in a little faster just because Minecraft's always been a little weird with connecting to local IPs like that. And yeah, we are on the server. How about that? So it's not going to show my actual IP because I connected using the local IP. If I wanted to have my friends on, uh, I would have to go ahead and port forward 25565 um, to the wings daemon IP. So I'd have to port forward it to 10.0.0.66 in my case. Alrighty guys, that's gonna be it for this tutorial video. If this helped you out, if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I plan to start posting more on this channel or actually posting on this channel um, in the near future. So I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. See ya.